Hey, it's Gavin here. If you're using Zapier and you want to distribute your leads between your different team members, then you're in the right place because I'm going to show you how to do that in just a few minutes using Zapier and it's really not that technical, so you don't worry about it. So if you've gone through Zapier's official tutorial for round robin leads, you're going to recognize the setup because these steps are exactly the same. But what I did with this tutorial is I feel they left out a couple of explanations which are going to throw off people when they go implement this themselves, especially when it comes to the size of your team. That's going to throw off some people. And that's why I wanted to create this video, just to explain those steps a little bit more. So I'm not going to go through every individual thing too detailed because they are in the Zapier tutorial. I'll link that in the description. But I'm going to explain some of the steps which I think are going to trip people up a little bit when they want to go implement this themselves. So the overview of this is essentially we have an action that comes in and then by the end of it, we are returning a given lead, a given team member that we want to assign the submission to. And maybe we are doing this in a CRM. So we are assigning this new lead in a CRM or sending an email to this uh, team member with that lead etc etc i'm not going to go into depth in regards to okay how do we actually do it with the crm like agile or close etc because they all have their own individual steps of how do we actually fetch a team member how do we then assign a task to a team member type of thing so i'm not going to go into that but all of that would happen after this point after we've selected our team member and i'll explain a little point over here which is where it might differ based on the CRM you choose. So let's say we have a, a form submission coming in type of thing, or we have a, uh, a new calendar booking type of thing coming in. That's where we are getting this new uh, lead from. So what happens in these steps over here is essentially we have a counter. And as each new submission comes in, the counter goes up. We do a bit of math. And we use the result of that math to pick out a person in our team in a list that we've defined. So over here, this is the list we have defined. So we are going to need to have a, a utilities action for the formatter. We define a list that's going to have the team members that we want. And then we're using that to pick out uh, we use that to pick out the, the team member we want to assign the lead to. So something that is important here is, so I have six people, and this plays into the math function we used earlier on. I'll explain that further. But also, if we are using a CRM, and let's say the CRM requires an ID to assign um, a lead to, we're going to rather have IDs here. So it's whatever the... Uh, CRM recognizes. In this case, I'm just returning the email address because it's under the, the assumption that I'm just going to email the lead to the person. But if you're using a CRM, you're going to have to have the IDs of your team member there potentially. It varies by CRM and I can't cover all of them, unfortunately. So we have our list, six people. That is right. That is the list that we're going to be picking someone out of. And then all of these steps do, all they do is they are incrementing that number for us and then we do a bit of math to determine which person in this future list we're going to pick out. So the second step is we are using Django storage, not Django storage, Zapier storage. Um, and Zapier storage, what that does is it allows us to essentially save values and fetch values that have potentially been affected or changed by other Zaps. Usually a Zap just runs in its own isolated little world, whatever information it has, that's what it has, unless it fetches information from another service. But in this case, with storage Zapier, it lets zaps of our, our own zaps kind of share information a little bit. And in this situation, we are incrementing that number of saying, okay, this time when this lead comes in, who do we need to assign our lead to? Which team member are we assigning them to? And the reason we are just incrementing a number is because... When it comes to lists, there's a concept called indexes, indices, and that is essentially how you pick items out of a list. So there are six items here, but the index starts from zero. So it actually goes, this is position zero, this is position one, two, three, four, five. 
So that is how these items actually look to a list in, in regards to data. And that is why we're incrementing by one. So when we say we are given the number two, we are saying we actually want this person in that list. When we are given the number zero, we actually want this person in the list. When we are given uh, index five, number five, we actually want that last person because it starts from zero. So we've got the increment step here, that storage. There will be a little bit of setup with the storage, but that is, if you just Google how to get set up, start with storage, that explains it a little bit more. I'm not gonna go through that now. And then all we have to do, storage is really simple once you set it up, is you just have a key. You can call this whatever you want. It can be lead count. It can be lead index. You can call it whatever you want. Just don't include any spaces. Keep it very simple. You can use underscores. That's usually fine. Probably even better just to leave it like that, to be honest. So, and then we are incrementing it by one. And you're going to see why we use this number in the next step. So in the next step, now we are deciding which person in our team member list over here we are going to pick out. And we do that with a bit of a math function called modulus. So you'll see here it's in the formatter. It's in the number section. And we use the spreadsheet style formula. And we use something called mod. And that actually stands for modulus. And what modulus does is we give it a number, we give it one number, and we say divide by another number. And in this case, we're dividing by five. And what modulus does is that it actually gives us the remainder of that division. So let's say we have the number 12, we divide by five. Five goes into 12 two times perfectly, but then we have two left over. Let's say we have the number five, we divide by five, it goes into five perfectly, there's nothing left over. If we have the number two divided by five, it doesn't go in at all and we have a leftover of two. So now you can potentially see how that looping around works. And this number that we're divided by needs to be equal to the number of people we have in our list. Because what's gonna happen is saying, now we are on lead number four and um, uh, we are um, on lead count number four. We take number four divided by six. That doesn't go in at all. We have a remainder of two. So we're gonna be choosing, oh no, so we have a remainder of four. So we're gonna be choosing the fourth index in our list here, which is zero, one, two, three, four. We're gonna choose that person. If we are say on six itself, and we divide it by six with that modulus function, this becomes index zero, we get back zero. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of quick examples so that that's increment amount one. So test and review. I'm just gonna run this a bunch of times so the value goes up. So you can see here, I'm just incrementing over and over. So let's say that's a number three now. I'm gonna run this modulus function and it returns three. So that's gonna give us index three. I'm just gonna keep on incrementing this up to six just so you see again. So now we're on number six. We're gonna increment this up. I mean, we're gonna rerun the modulus function, six divided by six, zero. So you can see that's how it starts to loop around. I'll just show you one more to really lock it in. So let's say we've looped around now, and this is index eight, I mean, number eight. What number do you think it's gonna return when we run the modulus function? If you said two, you'd be correct. And that is how it starts to loop around. And then in this function, when we run it, it's gonna keep on returning me that next person of whichever index we gave it. So like I said, I hope that clears things up that I think the official tutorial was lacking a little bit. And as I mentioned, in this case, we would have another step of maybe email the lead to the person that gets returned, or if uh, we're using a proper CRM, Maybe this isn't the email address even that gets returned. We return a, an ID or something of the person in our CRM of our team member. And then we assign this new lead that comes in at the first step to that person in our CRM. So I hope that was uh, of a lot of value to you and that cleared things up if you were a bit confused about how to change the tutorial to your needs. So if that brought you a bit of value, I'd appreciate a thumbs up already. Uh, shows me a lot of appreciation and lets me know that you enjoy the videos that I'm putting out. And obviously I dedicate more time when I know uh, people are benefiting from it. it, gets me excited. And also gets my videos in front of other people like yourself who wanna use Zapier to run your business smoother, 
give themselves more time in their business for the things you enjoy most and then ultimately make more money. So uh, one last gift is that in the description, I have a link to my free Zapier Jumpstart Guide. And in that guide, I just cover some of the things I feel most beginners of Zapier really don't have a good uh, handle of kind of like one of these things of it doesn't get explained properly. And what I do in that guy is I go over some of these things, which I really think are going to be hurdles and roadblocks to people just starting out with Zapier. And it's really going to set you on a better path to understand how to get more creative with those apps, how to get more complex with those apps. And you really understand better some of the underlying concepts and then also how to work with those concepts. So in the description, like I said, I appreciate that thumbs up and also grab that link to the free guide you can just click through and then you can get set up with the free guide so hope things are good chat soon